Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to Wizards News. Today we're going to be talking about group battles and particularly all three professions and how do they work together and individually what can they do the best. Now this is going to be a special one because I'm joined with Expecto Go as the Magizoologist and with Animagus as the Aura. And the three of us will be talking about our own individual professions and how they best work together. So let's dive in and take a look at this one. So on my video today, we're going to be looking at the professor's profession, and that is my profession. So we're going to be actually going through the skill tree, we're going to be going through how do things work, we're going to be looking at what I can do to help out others in my group, as well as what others can do to help me out in the group, and we'll be going through a few things in a battle to actually make this all come together. Now if you are not an Aura, you can actually go over to one of the other channels. James from Expecto Go is going to be covering Magi Zoologist and all of this together, so if you want to see things from that point of view, go over to his channel. I'll be leaving a link to that down below and up in the cards. If you are an Aura, then you're going to want to go over to Animagus, and he will be covering all that on his channel and doing a really cool job there. So we're going to be able to see all three of them from three different points of view from someone who actually uses that on a regular basis and grows in that particular channel. So definitely take a look at their channels, but right now we're going to go take a look at professors. Let's go over here to the skill tree and take a look at this. Now the first thing you're going to come to down here is the deterioration hacks. And if you're going to be using green books, this is usually the first place I say to use them. The deterioration hacks is your key hex as a professor. Yes, they changed it recently and they brought it down to what it should be, so it's not quite as powerful as it used to be. But it is still a very powerful hex and it will allow you to do more damage to your foe when you attack and when they attack. It will do damage to your foe both times. So definitely beef this up and go all the way down the skill tree and use all of them and, and get this one maxed out. Next, you're going to see the Mending Charm. Oh, the cute little Mending Charm. Don't waste your stuff on this. If, if, you don't, if you have other places to spend it, don't put it on here. This should be the last thing that you fill up. It has a few little uses, but they're so minor that it's, it's almost not worth doing. So don't worry about the Mending Charm that much. Uh, there may be a time in the future where it's useful, but it's basically worthless right now. After that, we have two different avenues we can go down. Number one, we have the protection charm. And this is basically a shield that you can put on yourself or someone else in your group. And the protection charm is fantastic for helping you defend yourself. It basically increases your defense and makes it harder for your foes to hurt you. The second path you can go down is the proficiency charm. Now this allows you to beef up your proficiency. So the things that you are good at, this will help you become even better at them. And the cool thing about this charm is not only does it help one person it's put on, this helps the entire group all at once. So if you are regularly playing large groups with four and five people, definitely focus on beefing this up because it will help everyone in the group to be better at what they are good at. So usually when looking at beefing up the protection charm or beefing up the proficiency charm, I'm going to say it depends on what you're doing more. If you are more of a solo player, then definitely focus on the protection charm. This can be huge if you're just playing with one or two people. But if you regularly find yourself playing with three, four, or five people, the proficiency charm can make things go so much faster because it helps everyone in the group. Now as to all of the other lessons in here, number one, go for your power. Power is key. You will not get far unless you can deal damage to your foe. Number two, go for stamina. Build up your stamina. The more stamina you have, the more hit, pan hit points in your bank, the farther you will go. Once you have gotten those two pretty well down, then you start working on everything else. You can see over here on the side the focus charm. This is something that's going to be very important for professors particularly because all of the charms and hexes that we have cost a lot of focus points. And so this will give you more focus right off the bat. So right off the bat you can put out more charms and more hexes. I do also say it would be wise to work on your critical power. These are very, very useful because they make your critical hits that much stronger and they really can knock down a foe very quickly when you do get that critical hit. The problem is once you really get into these, these cost a lot of red books as so you've got to grind a lot of fortresses in order to build that up. Now if you don't know what all those symbols mean, you can come over here to the experience chart and it actually lists them out down here, what all of these symbols mean in the list here. And you can kind of go through here and see, oh wow, I really need to beef up my proficiency power. Maybe I should work on that next. And if you want more detail on what all of these actually mean and how they affect the game, I have an entire video on that. I'll try and leave a link to that down below. Next, I want to take you over to a battle. And I want to show you some of the things that other people can do to help you as well as you can do to help them. Number one, if you have an aura in the group, it is fantastic that they can help you with focus. Because if you can get some focus, then you can put a proficiency charm on the entire group 
or you can put up your protection shield. There are lots of things that you can do to really help out you and the group if you have more focus right off the bat. The professor, more than anyone else, needs focus right off the bat. And that is why if I'm doing a high level fortress right off the bat, I'm going to use a lot of invigoration drafts, particularly strong invigoration drafts. I'm going to use three of them right off the bat so that I can put a proficiency charm on everyone. I can put a protection charm on myself and then I can put a deterioration hex on my first foe. That really makes me powerful. It helps out the entire group. It costs a lot of potions, but if you're doing a very difficult big battle with a lot of people, it's definitely worth doing them all. If you haven't gotten to the initial focus state, then you're going to have to use four of those to get all of that focus in. Right off the bat, one of the other things that auras can do is that they can hex the people you're about to battle. So if there's an aura in the group and he has the extra focus for him, ask him if he can throw a couple hexes on the person you're about to be attacking. Especially if you're going after a pixie or an urkling, because they like to dodge, his confusion hex will help them so they don't dodge as much. Another thing an auror can do to help you is if they take a, the first hit at one of the foes, if they have dancing with dummies and some of the other fun things that auras can do, they can pack a massive punch in their first hit. We had one the other day where he knocked 1300 damage down on one person in one hit. That knocked them almost all the way down. He left, went on to someone else, gave them one hit, and I was able to come in and clean them up. It made it very easy for me. It made it very quick for him so he could hit, leave, and be done with it. So as you can see, auras and professors work very well together. But there is that other group of magizoologists. And magizoologists are key in healing. So usually, if there's a magizoologist in the group, I'm going to be asked to heal occasionally. Now most of the time, if we're in a big battle, I'm actually going to let myself be knocked out and knock all the way down. And then what they can do is revive me. And when they revive me, I'm healed completely with all of my stamina. And it takes less for them to revive me than it does to heal me. If time is incredibly important and they have the focus to do it, then they will heal me directly without letting me get knocked out. Uh, but that's a little bit less common. In the battle, you are going to be trying to get your pixies and you want to get the werewolves. Particularly, you want to focus on the werewolves because the werewolves are incredibly hard for the magi zoologist and they are fairly hard for the aura still. So you have the proficiency against werewolves. Dive in, knock out those werewolves, and focus on them first. Second, focus on the pixies. Pixies are easy for everyone, but for a professor, they're candy. Pixies are a quick, easy way to get focus and give that out to everyone. And a lot of times I'm getting in, it's, most pixies are one-hit knockouts. Um, when you really get up there, even some of the really high-level pixies are one-hit knockouts and you've gotten focus for everyone, everyone's happy, you can knock those out and be very quick. So get good at tracking pixies on the map and you will be able to help everyone out very quickly. If there aren't any pixies or werewolves, then next go after Urklings. Urklings are probably going to be the next easiest one for you as they're not, they're not your proficiency, they're not your deficiency, and they're a little easier. Acromantulas also are not your proficiency or your deficiency, so they're moderate, but Acromantulas have a lot of defense on them, so they take a lot more force to knock down. Now, it's better for the Magizoologist to get the Urkling and the Acromantula, but they're not always there, or there aren't enough pixies and werewolves in there for you to knock them all out. And then last, if you have to, go after the Dark Wizard, and then after the Death Eater, because those will be the hardest ones for you to get. Whenever you're in a fortress, it is best for you to focus on the foes that are easiest for you. Everyone should be looking at the foes that are easiest for them. Don't think about helping your foes out because, oh, this one's going to be hard for them. I really make, need to make sure I do this one, even though there's an easier one for you. Always focus on the easiest foe for you. That gets the most focus dealt out to everyone in the group, and it really helps things move along quickly. There's a reason that the professors are the most common profession out there. It is kind of that open area where you're, 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 you deal a decent amount of damage, you have a good amount of protection, you have a good assortment of hexes and charms. You're not really the massive knockout person, but you're not going to be taken down that hard. Auras can deal a massive punch, but they don't have much protection, they don't have much defense. Magizoologists can take a huge hit, but they don't punch that hard. And so professors are kind of that good balance between the two. Now that being said, sometimes it really is nice to just be able to hit once and be done, which an aura can do. And having a magizoologist in the group is phenomenally useful. They're rare, there's less of them out there, but if you have a magizoologist in your group, you can do far more with them because they can heal you and help you out along the way. 
So all three professions really have their way. And if you understand how your profession works in the group, what you can do for other people, what other people can do for you, it really makes group battles that much more fun. So I hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to hear your ideas. What do you think professors really need to do to make them very beneficial? Uh, let me know those down in the comments below. Also, definitely go take a look at Expecto Go and Animagus and see their sides of the story. Even if you are a professor, go check them out so you can understand the battle from someone else's point of view and what they need to do and maybe things that you can do to help them out a little bit more. If you did like this video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. <laughs> you know all those fun things. They really do help out the channel, and thank you for that. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You have been absolutely phenomenal and allowed me to do some really cool things like this. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a magical day. Uh-oh. Only three left. That means two are going to FanFest and one for tonight. So what do we get in here? We got, uh, we got, uh, we got, uh, <gasps> No frippin' way! Gildor Lockhart! Yes! He is the second hardest one to get.